Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for January 9th, 2020. 2020, I like that. All right, so I, I'm teaching a series, a brand new series entitled Great Freedom. And I've been waiting to get to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 all week. This morning, I got the green light from God, so we're going to get to it. So this is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 7 through 18. This is a very long passage, so it's going to take me a while to get through it. Uh, we'll be on this for a while. The, the title of today's message is Carriers of God's Glory. As, as born-again believers, you and I, we are carriers of the glory of God. So let's, let's see uh, really what I'm talking about. So what I'm going to do as I teach through 2 Corinthians chapter 3, I'm going to call this like a, a mini-series, and this mini-series will be called A New Dimension of God's Glory. As born-again believers, and once we receive the Holy Spirit, we are walking in a new dimension of God's glory. And really, that's something that I'm hearing for this season as well. So let's get into the word. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 7 through 18. I'm going to read this to you from the easy to read version. Here we go. Beginning at verse 7. Paul says, The old agreement that brought death, written with words on stone, came with a certain level of glory. In fact, the face of Moses was so bright with the glory of God, a glory that was ending, that the people of Israel could not continue to look at his face. So surely the new agreement that comes with a life-giving spirit has even more glory. This is what I mean. He says, the old agreement judged people guilty of sin, but it had glory. So surely the new agreement that makes people right with God has even a much greater glory. That old agreement had glory, but it really loses its glory when it's compared to the much greater glory of the new agreement. If the agreement that was brought to an end came with glory, then the agreement that never ends has a much greater glory. We are so sure of this that we can speak of this openly. We are not like Moses who put a covering over his face. He covered his face so that the people of Israel could not see his face or the glory. But this glory was fading away. And Moses did not want to see, let them see that it was ending. But their minds were closed. And even to this day, when those people read the writings of the old agreement, that same covering hides this meaning. That covering has not been removed for them, but it was taken away for us through Jesus. Yes, even today, when those people read the law of Moses, there's a covering over their minds. But when someone changes and chooses to follow the Lord, then that covering is taken away. Now, the Lord I'm talking about is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And our faces are not covered. And we are able to show everyone the Lord's glory. And we are being changed to be like him. This change is in us and it brings more and more glory, which comes from the Lord, which is his spirit. Now, my God, there is so much in that, that of course, it's going to take me a while to get through it. Uh, but I'll cover a few things on today. So what does this mean to you today about the glory of God? I have two things to share with you on this morning. I want you to prepare yourself now to receive what God is saying. Two things. Number one, here we go. The old covenant was the ministry of death and the new covenant is the ministry of life. Let me, let me make sure that I explain that. The apostle Paul called the old agreement, which was written with words on tablets of stone, he called it the ministry of death. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 7. Now, in verse 6, he said this right before verse 7. He said, God has made us to be able ministers of a new agreement from himself to the people. And this is not an agreement with written laws, but it's an agreement with the Holy Spirit. The, the written laws brings death, but the Spirit gives life. So he was like, no, the written laws, written with words on tablets of stone, that's the ministry of death, but the Holy Spirit is the ministry of life. Let me make sure that you understand the difference. The purpose of the law, there's nothing wrong with the Ten Commandments. Actually, the Ten Commandments are too right, right? So the purpose of the law was to show man the error of our ways. It was designed to show us that we need a savior. By giving us rules that are so perfect that no human outside of Jesus could comply with these rules, 
the father was bringing man to the end of himself, right? The goal was to show us that we are sinners outside of him. So sinners who need a savior, we need to be saved from our sin. In this way, the law is the ministry of death. Now, on the other hand, Paul says the new covenant, which was ratified in Jesus's own blood, is the ministry of life. The old covenant proved to us that we are wrong. Under the new covenant, we are made right. Now, we're not right because of what we do, and we're not right because of what we fail to do. We are only right because of what Jesus did. In Christ Jesus, we become the righteousness of God by faith, not by our performance, but solely by faith. And to make a good story even better, watch this, God took it a step further and then said, not only am I going to make you the righteousness of God, not only am I going to take Jesus's righteousness and put it on you, but I'm also going to fill you with my spirit. So when we're born again, we get to receive the precious Holy Spirit. At that point, not only are you righteous, but you are also filled with God, right? So you get to walk around with God on the inside of you. Today, as you go to work, you get to go to every meeting, every conversation, all the activity that you engage in on a daily basis with God on the inside of you. If you can ever get this, that not only are you righteous, but you are filled with God himself. If you can live your life with this mindset, these two mindsets, one is I'm the righteousness of God by faith. I am made right not because of what I do, but because of what Jesus did. I am the righteousness of God by faith. That's a mindset. Here's another mindset. I have God on the inside of me. I am God inside minded. God is on me and in me and with me and for me. There's nothing he can't do. Therefore, there's nothing I can't do. I can do all things through Christ who lives on the inside of me. When you have those two mindsets, then you live your life as an emissary from heaven and as a conduit of God's love and his light and his power in this world. That's good news. Number two, we have a glory that does not fade away. My, and I'm going to deal a lot with this in, this in this little mini series. The apostle Paul said in verse nine, 2 Corinthians 3, 9, the old agreement judged people guilty of sin, but it had glory. So surely this new agreement that makes people right with God has a much greater glory. Paul went on to explain that when Moses received the Ten Commandments, he came down from the mountain not realizing that his face was emanating the glory of God. This is Exodus chapter 34 and verse 29. Moses came down with the Ten Commandments written on tablets of stone and he had been with God, right? And so he comes out of that experience having been with God and wherever God is, wherever God is present, the glory is there. You cannot disconnect God from his glory. And so, so he's coming down, not realizing that his face is emanating the glory of God because he had been with God. And so, so they was like, whoa, Moses, we can't even talk to you. They was like, the glory of God is shining from your face. So he had to put a veil over his face to cover up the glory. Now, initially he put the veil over his face to cover up the glory because it was so strong. But then later Moses realized that the glory was fading away. And at that point, he did not take the veil off of his face. What he did was he kept walking around with the veil and he was pretending at that point, he was pretending to still have a glory that was already gone. Now, there's a lot I can say to you about this, and I'm going to teach on this in this series, but for this morning, I want to give you three quick nuggets as I close. Here's the first one. When you spend quality time with God and you walk away from that encounter, there should be a residue on your life that people can notice. The second point, people should know that you are a man or a woman of God, someone who knows God. I mean, I met people in the airport. I met people on planes or whatever, and they go, hmm. And, and they'll just ask me, are you a pastor? Um, do you know God? Are you a Christian? There's something about you, right? When people come in contact with you, they should be, they should come in contact with God. Why? Because there should be something on you that is noticeable. When you spend time in the presence of God, you cannot spend time in God's presence, in his face, and not be changed. And lastly, we have a glory that does not fade. It never fades away. Moses had to visit God on a mountain, and he only did that a few times. In the old covenant, the high priest was the only one that was authorized to go from the outer court to the inner court to the Holy of Holies, the most inner court where the Holy Spirit was. Only the high priest, only once a year, got to visit 
the Holy Spirit got to visit. And so, so here you have Moses who got to visit God on the mountain. He did that a few times. In the Old Testament, only the high priest was authorized to go to the temple of God from the outer court to the inner court to the most holy place, only got to visit the Holy Spirit once a year. And here we are in the new covenant. Under the new covenant, we are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. So now we're getting to carry around a presence 24 seven by 365 that these people could only visit. So we're not visiting God. We have God on the inside and our glory does not fade away. And so we have a glory that is permanent. We have, we're born again. We're filled with the Holy Spirit. We're covered with the blood of Jesus. We Listen, as you enter this day, enter this day cognizant of the fact that you have God on the inside of you, that, you, that his presence is there and this glory never fades away. So spend time with the God that you have on the inside of you. And as you do, then the glory that you have on the inside is going to be seen. When people come in contact with you, they will come in contact with God and they will come in contact with his glory because the residue from the encounter will still be on you. That is good news. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and say this. Say, say Father, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to ratify a new agreement. The old agreement, was the ministry of death. Under this new agreement, I get to enjoy the ministry of life. I have been made the righteousness of God by faith. Jesus' righteousness was imputed to me. It has been attributed to my account. I am now righteous and I'm also filled with your spirit. I get to carry around your presence. As I spend time with the Holy Spirit, I get to encounter you intimately. And as I do, I leave those encounters changed. When people come in contact with me today, they will know that I have been with you. I walk around with the residue of your glory all over me. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, don't you want my notes? You can get all my notes in your email inbox for free. So go to todaysword.org, click on the subscribe button and put your email address in there and you'll get all my notes in your email inbox for free. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, subscribe uh, download the app, subscribe to our podcast. Listen, I'm putting all of this out there for free. I want you to walk in the greatest level of yourself, the greatest version of yourself. Become the man, the woman that God has called and destined and designed and has desired for you to be. Enter this day knowing that you are walking around with God on the inside of you, that you are the righteousness of God by faith. And when you encounter God, there should be a residue of his glory. Do me a favor. Please share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline with your friends. I love you and God loves you more. Have an amazing day. God bless you.